Welcome to Mission on the Mountain. Thank you for joining us today as we continue to learn ways to communicate with God. Our topic today is prayer because this is really one of the primary ways that we communicate with God and that God communicates with us. And I know personally, I grew up as a baby, like young man, all the way through adulthood in church and heard a lot of different styles of prayer and how to pray. And my family, we prayed before meals um, throughout the day. So, so there was a, a routine of prayer that I was already used to, that I had grown up with. But in my mid to late teens, I decided I want to pray for myself. I want to pray not just because this is the right thing to do, this is what people are telling me I should do, but I want to know God. I really want to know God. And if I say I'm a Christian, then that means I should pray out of my own heart, my own desire, and not just because it's somewhat forced. So that really led me into a journey of, of, of learning how to pray. And my beginning prayer for my heart, my desire to know God was, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. A prayer that I knew, memorized, but had never prayed from my own heart, my own desire before. And that launched me into this wild journey that's still continuing to this day. So when we talk about prayer, I just want to encourage you, start where you are. But there's definitely some principles that will help you grow in prayer, expand in prayer, and really learn how to communicate with God through prayer. So first and foremost, there really is prayer should come from a desire to know God. There is certainly a thing of duty that, as I say, when I was growing up, you learned this is what you do, this is important, pray before meals, go to church and pray. And so there's definitely a thing, this is something good for me, so I'm going to do it. But if prayer is just something that you check off of your list, I can promise you it's not going to have the same effect that prayer should have and to bring that dynamic um, understanding of God and, and learning how to overcome and persevere and, and, and really to walk the life filled with the spirit that the Lord has created us for. So first and foremost, just that desire, that longing to know God and that will lead you to a determination because determination and consistency can really make or break your prayer life. Because I promise you, if you choose to pray, want to start praying, want to know God, there is a real enemy that does not want that to happen because there is power in prayer. There is such power in prayer. So the enemy will do anything to try to halt you from praying. You will suddenly find yourself more busy, more tired, more distracted. You name it, it can happen when you have chosen to pray. So I promise you, in the beginning, desire, determination, and consistency will be your foundation for just establishing a life in prayer and then allowing the Lord to grow that and see where he will take you from that. The, the other important piece of prayer and beginning in prayer is faith. Because really, if you feel like, oh, I'm wishing upon a star, it's not going to take you that far. I promise faith in Christ will take you much further than just wishing upon a star. I want to read to you from Hebrews chapter 11. This was so fun as I was preparing today to, to share just some of these beginning pieces of prayer. I found the three 11s. This is so funny. So it's Luke 11, Mark 11, and Hebrews 11. So I'm starting with Hebrews um, chapter 11, verse 6. And it says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For anyone who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. 
So as we begin to pray, we pray with faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. And if you struggle with faith, that's probably the first thing to ask for. Oh Lord, increase my faith. God, help me to have faith. I want to believe. But like the father in um, what Mark chapter 9, who tells Jesus, please heal my son if you can. And Jesus says, if? If? <laughs> All things are possible for those who believe. And that father responds, and I feel like this is a great statement of faith. I believe, help my unbelief. Or I believe, help me not to doubt. Help me in my place of doubt. I do believe, I want to believe. I'm giving you my little like childlike faith. Expand it. Help me grow, Lord. Help me be in faith. That's a great prayer to pray. It's a great place to start. But your prayer life will really grow when you realize, I love this, that, that God does exist and that he rewards those who seek him. And this reward is not like, oh, yay, you get a prize. Here's that car you wanted. Here's the $100,000. The reward is knowing God. The reward is peace, perseverance, fortitude. That's the reward is the Lord himself, and in him everything else is taken care of. So that's a very exciting place to start. The other thing as we're wanting to grow in prayer, you will grow, you will experience much more quickly when you are asking the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you instead of just trying to awkwardly do things on your own. We're told that the Spirit would intercede through us, that, that he would pray the perfect prayer, that there's this connection, this union that comes with us and with God through the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is where we're going to move to Luke chapter 11, and I'm going to read verses 9 through 13. From Luke 11. And I tell you, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. What father among you would, excuse me, what father among you would hand his son a snake when he asked for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asked for an egg? If you then who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So we've got this promise, ask and God will pour his spirit into us. He will stir up his spirit in us. He will help us grow and learn and communicate in prayer and come closer to his heart. So we're told to ask. It is a good thing to ask God for revelation, to ask God to show himself, to ask God to help you grow in prayer. This is not greedy or selfish. This is imperative. Ask God to do what only he can do through the power of his spirit. And as we begin growing and learning and reaching out to God in prayer, there's a couple of things that we can do um, to position ourselves to really hear and to grow, basically to prepare the, the ground for prayer. And there's some important things with this. So I'm going to start, this is where Mark chapter 11 is going to come in, and I'm going to read from Mark 11, and this is starting with verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. Now, here's verse 25. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have grievance, so that your heavenly Father may, in turn, 
forgive your transgressions. So as we begin to learn how to pray, one of the most important things that we can do, first of all, is believe that, that God wants to communicate, that he will communicate through prayer. And as we begin to pray, it's so important for us, first of all, to repent of our own wrongdoings, to repent of any way that we have separated ourselves from the Lord through through sin. And that's such an easy thing. This isn't condemnation. This is, oh, thank you, God, for your precious blood that covered me. Lord, forgive me for where I have failed, where I have fallen, whatever that is. So you ask for God's forgiveness and then choose to forgive anyone that you need to forgive. And forgiveness, again, does not mean that what someone did was right, but it means I hand this person or this situation back over to God and I give myself to God because I don't want to be like dragging this person around with me. I want God to deal with them and God deal with me in my heart. Help me keep on going. This is so important. So we want to repent, to forgive. And then the other piece is to honor, to honor God and to the best of our ability to be in a place of honoring those around us. You know, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the earth. In 1 Peter chapter 3, Peter warns husbands, he says, husbands, honor your wives, treat them with respect so your prayers will not be hindered. So there is an important thing about doing our best to be walking in faithful, kind-hearted, honoring relationships with one another. That's going to, to catapult our prayer life. And it works both ways because we really need a developed prayer life so we can walk honoring with those who sometimes we would rather punch out or strangle or run away from. So, so it's a, it's a two way street, but these are some great things just to lay that foundation, just to, just to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, just cover me with your blood. Forgive me my sins. Teach me your ways. Guide me. Holy Spirit. As I enter into this time of prayer, reveal whatever you want to reveal. Just welcome you, invite you into this, this time. Thank you, God, for being here. And that's your other key. Uh, we're told in the Psalms, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his courts with praise. Praise and thanksgiving is a primary, again, as we're talking primary, foundational ways to pray, to, to pray with praise, to pray with thanksgiving is really to position yourself to hear from God much more clearly and to hear from his heart of love, even because you are expressing this love, this desire, this thanksgiving, this confidence, this faith, this hope. And it's something that you grow in. It's something that you learn. This is why you pray. Because I promise you, when you begin praying, you're not always going to be in this lovey-dovey state of rapture. <laughs> Oftentimes, you're going to be fighting. You're going to be so tired. You're going to be so distracted. So I'm not saying that unless you feel, oh, like the sound of music, that your prayer is ineffective completely not true. We have times of consolation and we certainly have times of desolation. When you think about Mother Teresa who went through so many years feeling like she didn't hear God at all, almost like she was abandoned, and yet she persevered in faith and she persevered in prayer and she taught others to do the same. So again, that's where faith comes in. Prayer is all about faith and not about feelings. I promise you, so often you won't feel anything. But wow, what faith will do and how God will reveal himself is so important. A few more beginning tips of developing a prayer life is that you can pray anytime, anywhere. Prayer is not limited to a quiet room with a lit candle or um, a church gathering or mass or 
or whatever that might be. You can pray anytime, anywhere, because prayer is basic conversation with God. And what's so cool, you don't have to have cell phone service to get through to God. He is available 24 seven all over the world, even in outer space, if you happen to have a chance to be on a spaceship. He can never, ever, ever be away from God. He's always there, he's always accessible. And one way that the enemy will try to distract you is to say, oh, look, you don't have your quiet time. Well, if you don't have quiet time, just pray in the noisy time. I found my car to be an excellent place to pray. I called it my mobile prayer closet because when I would be driving to school and then later on um, driving to work, it was my time where I could talk to God. I could pray and oftentimes I'd put on praise music and just thank God. And so that was a place where I wasn't eyes quiet, uh, eyes closed, hands folded, it, because it is not safe to drive with your eyes closed. But you can talk to God with your eyes open. When you think about it, usually when you're talking with someone, don't you talk with your eyes open? It's okay. God will hear you. He says, seek my face, look into my face. So you can pray in the grocery store. And that is if you don't have 20 kids screaming, yelling, that sort of thing. I understand it's easy to get distracted. But what I'm saying, there are those deep times of quiet prayer that you will reserve that will be like that resting in the Lord. But you don't have to wait to pray for only when you have that quiet time. Uh, so pray on the go because, again, it's conversation. And if it's the simple thing of, wow, Lord, I needed to get some Gouda cheese and look, Gouda's on sale. Thank you so much. It's like you're bringing Jesus into that grocery store. It's like you're aware and you're thankful. You're just keeping your mind fixed upon him. And that's sort of like the Brother Lawrence model of practicing the presence of God. If you're doing the dishes, you're doing them with Jesus. He's right there. So entering into that um, just place of conscious awareness, like God is with you and just reminding yourself throughout the day, Jesus in there is there. And just a little thank you or a little wow, God, or okay, God, I'm about to lose it. Just please help reinforce your breath of Holy Spirit. Let me breathe you in. And you can do this is beginning prayer. This is just that awareness and having that little conversation, that running conversation with God all along the way. Then to grow in prayer, of course, it is so important to carve out that alone time or that more focused time, if you will, where okay, this is where I'm going to sit down and purposely seek the Lord, and whether it's in reading or in silence, in, again, that praise, conversation, so many different ways, but, but making a specific time. And for some people, that routine is important. I know people that I have to get up early before the day begins to pray. Some people are more on the Jewish time schedule. It's like they're going to pray in the evening, like so when the sun goes down, the nighttime prayer. So then when they're waking up, they can hit the road running. But the last thing they did was that prayer before bed and that set them up for the, the next day. Sometimes people are fortunate enough to maybe have the lunchtime. Their lunchtime is their prayer time. So it's not so much about when but that you make that time. And as a beginner, don't let your goal be so lofty <laughs> that you miss out. This idea, oh, I'm gonna pray an hour a day. Awesome, that's great, and you will grow into that. But perhaps that goal of 10 minutes, that 10 minutes of specific focus time on the Lord to, to set your heart toward Him is going to be more important. And then it will become more addictive that you'll find yourself making more time for that prayer, that focus, whatever. But in the beginning, set achievable goals that you will be able to persevere in prayer without giving up. Another thing people oftentimes will say, wow, just like when I go to pray, I always get so tired. I seem to just fall asleep or doze off. 
Well, in that case, it's probably going to be better to pray standing up, walking, moving, maybe praying out loud if, if your space is conducive to that. Um, but, but certainly move around. If you have a tendency to fall asleep, probably a, a nice cozy couch with a blanket is not going to be your best beginning point for prayer. Maybe go outside in the fresh air, whatever it takes. This is what I'm saying. And what's beautiful is the Lord has given us five senses. He's given us our smell, our taste, our touch, our sight, and our hearing. So we can engage in prayer with all of these different senses that God has given us. So that's why that moving around can sometimes be very good. Speaking out loud can be powerful, can help reinforce what's going on. Sometimes writing down, that's great. That journaling or that writing, that scripture verse to, to help you remember it, to help you call it to mind when you need it. It's a great tool of just little things that you can do to engage with your different senses so you're not just dozing off, falling asleep as you're getting ready to go. So again, these are just some very beginner things. And the last thing I want to cover in this segment that's so important, pray from the perspective of son or daughter. By the, the blood, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we have been redeemed. We have been born into the family of God. When we repent of our sins and choose to follow Jesus with our lives, when we dedicate our lives to him, we have become children of the Most High. Therefore, we have access to everything Jesus had access to. And he said, everything I have, I give unto you. So everything my Father has given me, I have given unto you. So I have given you all of the resources, all of the access to heaven. Like even in the book of Hebrews, we're told, let us come boldly before the throne of grace where we can receive mercy, where we can receive all that we need to live the life in this world and to prepare for the life to come in the next. So it's so important. You are not an orphan. You are not a beggar. Jesus, over and over again, he says, ask. He never says, beg God, plead with God. He simply says, ask, ask. There is no need to come from a place of poor, pitiful me. That is not humility. That's self-deprecation. Humility is recognizing, God, I need you. Without you, I am nothing. Without you, Jesus, I, I couldn't get up in the morning. I couldn't do anything. But God, with you, Oh, with you, Christ in me, the hope of glory. We can do all things because you strengthen me, Christ. So I encourage you, pray from that place of a favored child because even if you have never experienced that in this natural world, believe it or not, through Christ, you are God's favorite. We all get to be his favorite. He is so rich, so lavish, so inexhaustible. He has a full heart, a full desire, everything for you. You are not an orphan and you don't have to beg for scraps because God is a good father. And as we read in Luke 11, that he loves to give good gifts. He loves to give his spirit. That's his delight. That's why he came. That's why he tells us to ask. I mean, in Matthew, in kind of that parallel verse that we read um, in Matthew's version, he says that, that God knows if evil men know how to give good gifts, how much more does the Lord love to give good gifts, good gifts to those who ask him. We're told to ask and trust that we receive. So that's simple. You're not a beggar. You can pray as a beloved child. And I, 
even encourage you with that honor and reverence to approach God as daddy. Approach him as great big daddy papa God. Such a different position than the servant or the slave going to the master. And we recognize our daddy, he is calling us higher. This isn't just, you get to be a spoiled child. You're not going to be a spoiled brat, but you're going to be a child that is loved, cherished, and is given everything that you need. So approach him, daddy, you've got this. Like when you were a little kid and you were going to, to go to, as a little kid for me, it was exciting. We're going to go to McDonald's and never did I think, oh, oh no, um, how am I going to buy the food? What am I going to do? I knew, okay, this is, I'm going with my family. Daddy's taking us. So daddy's going to buy. Daddy's going to provide. I can't do this. I'm a little kid. I don't understand even what work is. But I just know we're going somewhere. Daddy's going to drive. Daddy's going to order. He's going to ask me, what do I need? But he's going to, to help with that order. He's going to pay for it. He's going to either carry it or maybe if I want to carry the drink just so I can feel so big, look, I'm doing part of this. Great. But daddy's got this. And that's where I want to encourage you. Your prayer will grow so much more quickly, deeply, intimately when you're not begging and trying to scratch and plead your way for God to notice you. He sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He is a great communicator. So open yourself to him. And there's so much more that we're going to talk about in these next few um, teachings uh, about different forms of prayer and how to engage in them. But for now, I just want to pray, Lord God, we thank you that you are a good father. We thank you that you love to communicate with us. And I pray now for my brothers and sisters who are who are wanting to grow, who are engaging in prayer, who are ready to, to even start again if they feel that they've fallen off of the, the, um, the prayer wagon. And Lord, for those who are on that wagon, Lord, we pray that you continue to take us further, deeper, Lord, that you continue to reveal yourself to us. And Lord, we ask, as Jesus' disciples ask, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us, Heavenly Father, how to pray and to continue to live a life pleasing to you here and now. In Jesus' holy name, amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, God bless you.